like I said in my introduction video, I have an, quite a large DVD collection. And so I thought today I would start off doing a series of videos talking about my DVD collection. Um, now, over the years of me watching YouTube, I've, I've seen loads of people do film reviews on films that have just come out in the cinema and that's brilliant, it really helps and it's it just it, it helps me choose certain films to go and see in the cinema that I might like and that when they might come out on DVD I can buy them. But um I that's brilliant but because I really can't do that, I thought it'd be a lot easier for me to talk about the DVDs that I own. DVDs that I own and the ones that I actually like. So, today what I thought I would do would be talking about a DVD of a TV series that I absolutely adore. It's in quite a few parts because of the fact that it's such a large series. It ran from 1981 to 2003 and over here in England it was only fools and horses. We got some half price crack ties, some miles and miles of carpet tiles, TVs, deep freeze, and David Bowie LPs, ball games, gold chains, wuss names, and header push, and Trevor Francis track suits from a mush and shepherd's bush. Bush, 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 bush. No income tax, no V8, no money back, and no guarantee. Black or white, rich or poor, we've cut prices and a strong. He is a struggling person. All he really want, wanted to do was go to art college. He wanted to move away from the wheeler dealer lifestyle that his big brother had been living since the 60s. And all he really wanted to do was move away from that, become legit and carry on a very successful life, maybe making a bit of money from making art. Over the period of the series you realise that the majority of the things that Rodney tries fails. The second character that we get introduced to is Grandad. Grandad is Rodney and Delboy's um, grandfather. He is a lazy old sod. He just sits in his chair in their flat um, watching two televisions. One has the screen working on it but no volume. The other TV has the screen not working on it but with what well, with sound. So if you watch the watch two TVs at the same time make sure that you've got the on the right channel of course you can have a decent show. <laughs> now, the show starts off with an argument. A lot of the time, that's what happens within the Trotter household. There are arguments after arguments after arguments. It is finally put to bed when Dell, our main, main character, gets brought in and he has to bring an end to it. Once all three, of the, all three of the main characters have been introduced, we get to see a lot more about their lifestyle. From the very start of the show, you realise that these men 
are wheeler dealers, which, if you don't understand what that means, what they do is they work on a street market in South London, and because they are illegal, they don't have a permit or they don't have they don't have a contract to be able to sell in markets. They are what is called fly pitchers, which mean that they have to they can't really be caught by the police and if they see a policeman coming they have to scarter quite quickly. So like I said, the next thing you see is them trying to go off and doing do a bit of business. This is where we get introduced to one of the future long standing characters of the T V show, Trigger. Now Trigger is one of those people that whatever happens will always be there. You'll always be late with the response or understanding a joke or understanding anything. He often gets characters' names wrong, but he's one of those characters that you know deep down is a core, a core member of the show, and without them, the show doesn't really work. So, the Trotter brothers try and buy some briefcases off Trigger. And throughout the entirety of the episode, the um, you see that Trigger himself, being a petty criminal, has stolen these um, suitcases and have tried to move them on quickly. Without knowing them, without knowing that the briefcases were actually rejects. Now, rejects is a term that you will hear an awful lot throughout the entirety of Only Fools and Horses. If you don't know what it means, it means they, it can't be used, it, there's something wrong with it, and it, it, it just can't be sold. So, but that never stops the Trotter Brothers, even if it's written, rejected, all over the place, they will still try and take it and sell it, just try and get a bit of extra money. So, throughout the episode, these briefcases are a sore point for the relationship between the two brothers, Dale and Rodney. Climaxing in a massive argument between them, where most most of the argument is where Dell goes through all of Rodney's shortfalls, and Rodney does the same through Dell's shortfalls, and it ends up that Rodney runs away from home. Now, Dell himself even though he will argue and fight with his little brother, this is the, one of the first. This is obviously the first time that you ever see Dell really caring for his younger brother, which he's been doing since their mother died many, many years before. So, with that in mind, we have got to remember that these two men, even though they're brothers, there is more of a father-son relationship. Because the person that wrote the play, the late John, F well, wrote the story, the late John Sullivan, he himself was brought up in a family that there was a large gap between a sibling and himself. An interesting twist to bring to the characters. So, throughout the show, you will see that the, there's a lot of times where Rodney will go through many of the deals that Del Boy wants to go and do but in the back of his mind will say oh that will never work or this will never work or that and at the very end when it's finally come out that Del's idea didn't work you'll have Rodney there saying huh I knew that wasn't going to work and that's of course is another bit of the charm because whatever happens if you've got a sibling a brother or a sister if you, they think you're doing something wrong or you're not doing something the way they would do it if you fail, they'll always be there saying, Ha! I knew that was going to happen. At the, very em at the very end of the episode, Rodney finally comes home. He's dishevelled, he hasn't shaven for days, and he tries to act all hard and all clever by saying to his brother that he managed to go off, managed to get to the south of France, and found this beautiful French girl. Of course this is complete rubbish. Dell knows this is complete rubbish. Because the day that Rodney left, Dell went into his bedroom to make sure he hadn't left anything behind. 
And what did he do? He left his passport, so he couldn't leave the country. But this is another wonderful way of John Sullivan writing, which was the brotherly love, which just shows, and it's, I think, shown perfectly within the last couple of lines, which is where Dalboy says to Rodney, where, what do you want to do? Do you want to, you want to go over to see this girl's family yacht or do you want to go down to the local pub and it's and during this conversation you do find out that Rodney was right about the briefcases not being not being able to be sold because no one wants them and Ro Del Boys had to throw them into the river which just shows that there is that relationship that even though Rodney is younger and less less knowledgeable of the market he can still tell his brother what can and what will and what won't sell but of course that's where Dell's characters really come out is where he's that stubborn and so single minded that he won't even listen now earlier on before we meet Frigga um, we, we meet another character that isn't often in the show but in the early episodes is mentioned and it's um, Janice the Barmaid. Now Janice the Barmaid is what has been known in Britain as an old fashioned barmaid, especially during the 60s and the 70s. Very, very much, um, you know, print clothes, you know, kind of like um, a tiger or a leopard print or, you know, far too much makeup, stinks of perfume smokes like a and drinks like a fish it's one of those it's just one of those character characters that if you if you run around in those circles in the south of, south end of london in the slightly rough and black market sort of areas that you would see them hanging around and it's it's very much like that and you see that Trotter Brothers and the Trotter family itself is being incredibly well respected within this community and that's one of the most important things that will carry on being brought back to the forefront throughout the entirety of this series that the family isn't just respected within themselves but respected in the, the wider community. So today's um, rating for Only Fools and Horses episode number one, Big Brother, is number four. Thank you very much. Have a good night.